Simon of Cyrene is the man mentioned in the Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke as the man who helped Jesus to carry his cross at least part of the way. It is significant that the Gospel writers named him, and Mark even included the names of his sons, Alexander and Rufus. Thus, the Gospel writers must have known him, or at least known of him. Mark may have included the sons' names because he was writing for the Gentile community in Rome, and these two boys, who in fact were young men by the time of Mark's Gospel, may have been known to them. Cyrene was the capital of Cyrenaica, a Roman province in North Africa. Specifically, it was located in modern-day Libya. The city had a large population of Greek-speaking Jews. Some scholars suggest that Simon may have been a Jew and may have come to Jerusalem for the Passover. This would have been a journey of almost 900 miles. Other scholars speculate that, in fact, Simon may have emigrated to Palestine and might have come a much shorter distance. Because of his birthplace, some scholars speculate that he was dark-skinned, but this remains unknown. Jesus was weak from loss of blood due to the scourging that preceded his crucifixion. The crossbeam he carried the vertical post was already fixed in the ground at the crucifixion site, was very heavy, and Jesus kept stumbling and falling as he proceeded. The Roman soldiers needed to hurry the process along because of the approaching Sabbath, yet Jesus could not move very quickly. Furthermore, if he died on the road, the prime purpose of crucifixion would not be accomplished. It served as a deterrent to others. In a similar vein, the Pharisees also did not want Jesus to die before he reached Calvary because death on a cross was, in their view, proof that he was cursed by God. This comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21. Anyone who is hanged is a curse of God. Simon was coming into the city from the countryside when pressed into service to carry the crossbeam, he literally had to turn around and go back in the opposite direction. This can be seen as a metaphor for an encounter with Christ turning a person's life around. In taking the crossbeam from Jesus' shoulders, Simon physically touched Christ, felt his breath, and almost certainly was marked by the blood which was flowing profusely from Jesus due to the scourging and additional wounds he received during his falls on the way. Though not included in the gospel narratives, Christian tradition holds that Simon initially was reluctant to carry the cross beam for Jesus. Polish mystic Wanda Malczowska received a vision of the encounter and she described it this way. During the next fall, already the Lord Jesus could no longer stand up. A torturer violently forced him to rise. Because before the Sabbath they had to execute a death sentence, they were looking for a man who would raise the Lord Jesus and, for some part of the road, carry his cross. They stumbled across Simon of Cyrene, a pagan, going to the city in search of a garden to lease. They stopped him and forced him to raise Jesus. Jesus looked upon him, and this look was understood by Simon. He came to know immediately the mystery of the cross and fall in love with the Lord Jesus and become his admirer. I saw him sweetly pick up our Lord from the ground, shake the mud off him, and then gladly take the cross on his own shoulders and walk beside Christ, suffering from him intensely. I heard him say to the Lord Jesus, I am sorry, Jesus, that at the first request from the Jews I did not rush to help you until they forced me to come, for I did not know you. Now, meeting you in such a terrible state, I have come to believe that you are God, hidden in a human body. My belief was confirmed by your look, penetrating to the depths of my whole being. It appeared to me that your cross, which on me was placed, would be too heavy, 
and yet it is easy to carry, because you, my Lord, are walking beside me. You have not departed me, and to the end of my life I will bear it with joy. Though he was a real historic figure, Simon also symbolizes all of us who face burdens and difficulties we do not want to bear, including, perhaps, people whose needs impose demands on us. Our human nature makes us want to reject these pains, but Simon's experience tells us that there is beauty and redemption in dealing with these difficulties, and the load may be lighter to bear if we look for the hidden God within the pain. The book of Acts relates that Cyrenians were among the people gathered who witnessed the apostles preaching in foreign tongues on the day of Pentecost. We do not know if Simon was in this crowd, but it is possible. Christian tradition holds that Simon was converted as a result of his encounter with Jesus and that his family also became Christian. The only tentative evidence of this is a mention of Rufus in St. Paul's letter to the Romans when he says, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Of course, it is unclear if this is the same Rufus, son of Simon. Simon himself never again appears in scripture, but we know that the encounter must have changed him.